Welcome my bunnies, my name is Thomas. This is my beginner closure script series and it also happens to be the last video in the series. Not the last video I'm ever gonna do, just the last video in this series. What we spent our time doing in the previous videos, which you can check out above or in the description below, is we focused on how to set up a closure script project from scratch. I always find it super important to understand how you get to a production grade closure script project. And it's helpful if you do it by hand and walk through the whole thing and that's exactly what we've done in this closure script series. So if you haven't already, like the video, subscribe to the channel, tell your friends, and let's get started by talking a little bit about what we're gonna do in this video, which is actually showing you how to just add reagent to your project in general. All right, now for this video, I am assuming that you are in the exact same place that I am in as far as where the Closure Script project is set up. If you are not, you can get to this place by just going through the playlist that I linked above before and it's in the description below and it'll take you to the point where we're at right now. And what we're gonna be doing in this video is, as I've said, showing you how to connect Reagent, which is the first step that you need in order to make a spa in a modern Closure Script application. So what Reagent is, is a light wrapper around React. And when I say React, Yes, I am referring to the same React that we have in the JS ecosystem that is used pretty pervasively. And it's a little bit more than a wrapper because it's not just about syntax with Reagent. They make some smart choices around state management and providing you what would be considered the JSX equivalent in ClojureScript, which is called Hiccup. So step by step, we're going to go through a few things. The first one, updating some of our dependencies like ClojureScript and FigWheel to the latest versions if we need to. I haven't checked the project in a little while, so maybe we don't need to do anything. And the second piece is we're going to actually add Reagent. We're going to connect HMR to our setup. And finally, I'm gonna show you how to bring your own version of React to Reagent, which is kind of exciting for people who like to have more granular control over the versions of their dependencies. And without further ado, let's get to it. What we have on the left is my terminal. On the right, we have my editor and hopefully with text that you can actually see this time. And it was at the state that we left it in the previous video, which was where we were using React and React DOM. So what I'm gonna do right now is do a little bit of cleanup. I'm not gonna delete the CP cache node modules or target directory like I normally do. Instead, I'm just gonna get rid of all of this and get rid of React and React DOM because we don't need those for this video. With that, we can go on to the first part of the video, which is actually updating our depths.edim. So what we're at right now is 7.6.4, and the latest, latest version of ClojureScript is 7.7.3. So we'll update that. 0.2.11 is the latest version of FigWheel, so we'll go there. And now we actually want to add Reagent. So what that looks like is we add Reagent, we add the version, which is 0.10.0. There are some alpha versions out right now, but we don't want to use those. Let's just use this stable release. And that is everything from actually adding Reagent as a dependency to our project. Okay, so we can close our devs.eden file and where we wanna go now is actually into our hello world. And the first thing we do is we want to actually require in Reagent. So that's going to be reagent.dom, and then I'll just call it dom. Now, notice that it's reagent.dom. If you ever come across tutorials and they don't use reagent.dom, they're using reagent.core, they're likely using an older version of reagent where everything was packaged inside of the core namespace. What reagent has done recently with a .10 release is they have actually made it so they mirror more closely how the React API looks. So in React, what you would do is you would have the React uh, namespace and then you have react.dom which is how you actually render something like a react application. So enough of that history what we're going to do right now is we have reagent.dom because of that we have reagent which means we can write our first reagent component and there are three kinds of components that you can write. They are all closure script functions that's kind of what makes it a little bit interesting. So you are using native ClojureScript syntax. There is nothing special when it comes to writing Reagent. And I'm gonna call this app. I usually just call the entry point of my application app. So we're gonna do defn app, and then you're gonna notice something that looks a little wonky right now. I will explain this in a moment. We'll do hello there. Okay, so what is this? Well, this whole thing is just a function, just like you would do in ClojureScript normally. This piece here is a vector with a keyword and a string. It's called hiccup, and I'm not gonna go do into too much detail about what hiccup actually is. Just think of it like the JSX equivalent in ClojureScript. From there, we actually need to render our application now. We need to render our React application. 
what I'm going to do is create another function called render app. And I will show you why I create a function because you don't necessarily need to have a function. You can just call the render method in line if you wanted. So we'll do render. And then the thing you want to render is hiccup. And I want it to be the app. So if you recall, that's this piece here. And this is pretty much almost a straight wrapper around React's uh, render method in the DOM API. And then what we want to do is we say, okay, I want to render this element, React element, inside of some HTML element that already exists on the screen. So if you recall, we had, we go into resources, and then we had this guy here which was hello world container. So we're gonna render our reagent application into this guy right here. And to do that, we do JS slash document, and then I'm just gonna do get element by ID, and then it's going to be hello underscore world underscore container. From there, we now want to render our application. So we say render app. This is how you call a function, and we're calling this function, which itself calls this. All right, let's see if everything worked out. So we'll see if everything worked out by running our application with clj-a dev. And seeing as this is probably the first time that you ever ran Reagent in the project, if it is, and if you don't have Reagent installed, at least the 0.10.0 version that I do, it will actually download in this step right here uh, the first time you run it. I have it installed, so it's not gonna run. Okay, and there we go. All right, so our application is running. It says hello there, and if I change a word, it should show up here, and it does. All right, so now we have our reagent app running. I'm gonna show you how to try to take advantage of reloadable code that Figwheel provides. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna add in another function. And I'm gonna write it out first, and then I'm gonna show you what it actually does. Render app. Okay. So what this function does is this function is going to be something that handles all of our side effects every single time Figwheel reloads our project when we save a file. But as you recall from my other video where I did a little intro about how to do Figwheel and HMR, which is linked above, what we need to do is we need to add a little meta tag to this. And that one there is going to look like this, after load. And what this essentially does is every single time your project reloads, Figwheel is going to say, okay, after I reload, I'm going to call this function here. We also want to do something else. Every single time this reloads, we don't want render app to be called because that means this one will be called and this one will be called. We only want to call this the very first time the file loads. So in order to do that, a common pattern is to do a def once, and I'm just gonna give it a name like init app, wrap this, and we'll do that, a do, and then we will return true. All right, all this is doing is saying, literally, I'm just gonna run once and I'm gonna store the value as true. So this will only go the first time. With that, that should be everything that we actually need to connect HMR properly. And I'm just gonna go back to there for the original part. All right, and that is everything that we need to actually connect HMR. So what's gonna happen is every single time your project reloads, this is the one that is called. You can put other stuff inside of there. For example, your routing system or anything like that, and everything will render as expected. There is one more thing that I wanna show you, and that is how to add a custom version of React to Reagent. So Reagent is actually pretty good at keeping up with the latest versions of React. As of right now, it's using 16.3.1. How do I actually know that it's using 16.3.1? Well, I can actually go uh, to Reagent's GitHub page right here. And if I go and check out their project.clj, and let's say I look for JS, actually, let's just look for React. Right here, what I see is this. So we know that these are the versions they're using. Maybe that's not enough for you though. Maybe you're kind of saying, well, what if I, that's not the version that they're using? If that's the case and you need extra proof, this is our running application right here. And what we can do is look inside of sources. And if we actually were to search for React, we would see this 16.13.1. So how would I go about using my own version of React? 
So what we need to do for that is we're going to go into our depths.eden file. And there is a keyword that is available for uh, your dependencies called exclusions. So what we can do is go inside of here and we type in exclusions and then we give it a vector. And what we're gonna specify inside of here is we actually want to say, I do not want to use the version of React that you provide. And we're also gonna say that I do not want to use the version of React DOM that is applied by Reagent. That's step one. Step two, there are other ways to add custom versions of React. I'm gonna show you the way that I prefer to go. I'm not gonna show you all the different ways. Just my suggestion is use this one. Go into your package.json file and you're gonna see that there is a version of React that we already have. This is from our previous video. Let's just add in the very latest version. This is version 17. And this one's actually kind of fun because it doesn't actually have any feature changes. It's mainly just a utility uh, major release, which is made to make upgrading to the latest versions of React, or sorry, newer versions of React, much easier. Uh, just to provide some historical context, which I thought was funny. So once we do that there, we have these new versions. We're gonna pull up our terminal again. I'm just gonna stop the application from running. And let's just do npm install to get these latest pieces of React. Cool, so now that that's done, we're going to do run dev again. And it will look like nothing has changed, but if we open up our terminal, and look inside of sources once again, you're now going to see that the React version is 17, which is the version that we updated to right here. As I said in the beginning, we are not gonna spend much time digging into how to use Reagent, how to build an application, how to do any of that stuff. There's tons of material, and I am also going to be making more courses in the future where I will definitely dig into these. I have a pretty big one planned out, and I'm super excited for it. So if that is something that you might be looking forward to, please, once again, subscribe to the channel, like the video, and I will see you in the next series.